is enforcing the will of God by going the ways of God. Any level you want to see yourself on, it will only come by faith. One of the ways to please God is by faith. One of the ways to make God excited is by faith. God is not moved by our crying. He's not moved by our tears. He's not moved by our shouting. He's only moved by a shout of faith. Anytime you begin to please God, you begin to enjoy the pleasures of God. If you don't want to see sickness, you don't want to see shame, you don't want to see reproach this year, you must put your faith to work by faith. Enoch was translated. Enoch changed level. This is our year of new beginning. This is our year of supernatural supply and abundance. This is our year of turning point. This is our year of good things. There is no way you and I will experience all these beautiful things if we don't put our faith to work. I see God injecting faith into somebody. I see God infusing faith into somebody. I prophesy over your life. You will experience all round blessings by faith. This morning we are looking at the subject open doors through righteousness. Open doors through righteousness. Our objective this morning is to understand the open door power of righteousness integrity or godly character the open door power of righteousness integrity or godly character so open doors through righteousness there are open doors through righteousness psalm 5 verse 12 psalm 5 verse 12 for you O lord will bless the righteous with favor you will surround him as with a shield. For the Lord will bless the righteous and will surround the righteous with favor as with a shield. It is well known that good character open doors. And it is well known that bad character also closes doors. So good character open doors. Bad character closes doors. God will always bless the righteous, the upright, the one with integrity with favor the bible said the lord will bless the righteous with favor and he will encompass him with shield he will encompass him the favor is like a shield around the righteous good character open doors and bad character closes doors god will always bless the righteous now i want us to look at some examples in scriptures where good character opened doors and also where bad character closed doors we want to see if there are examples in scriptures where good character opened doors and also where bad character closed doors so we are looking at good character that opened doors in the bible let's look at rebecca i want to look at the life of rebecca Good character opened marital door for Rebecca. Rebecca was the wife of Isaac. You remember the other day when Abraham sent to go. He sent a servant to go and look for a wife for his son Isaac. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 12. Genesis chapter 24 verse 12. Then the servant said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day. And show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water. And the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, Drink. And I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. In other words, as I'm standing here, the girl that comes that I will ask of water from, and she will give me water. And also go to the extent of feeding my camels with water. 
let her be the one that you have appointed for your servant Isaac. Look at verse 15. And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. In other words, she had a godly character. Very beautiful she behold, like my wife Lady K, a virgin. No man had known her. No man had known her. In other words, she had a godly character. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. Look at verse 19. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. In fact, in other words, she could have stopped at the first courtesy. At the first courtesy of giving the servant water to drink, Rebecca could have stopped them. But she extended her courtesy by also feeding the camels of the servant with water. Verse 20. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. Rebecca fed the camels of the servant with water. Now, one camel can drink 200 liters, that is 53 gallons of water in three minutes. One camel can drink 53 gallons of water in three minutes. So let's assume that the man had 20 camels with him. Rebecca still sacrificed to get water for all the camels. For all the camels. What a godly character. Rebecca was so relational. Rebecca was so nice. Rebecca was so friendly. Look at verse 21. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Now the servant was shocked. The servant was amazed because he could see that God had made his journey short. Verse 22. So it was when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose, a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrist weighing ten shekels of gold and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me. Please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? Jump to verse 66. Jump to verse 66. I love this beautiful story. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent. And he took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is how Isaac got his wife, Rebekah. By the manifestation of godly character by Rebekah, Isaac married Rebekah. Rebekah was a very nice lady. She was a virgin. She was a very sweet lady. Rebekah was relational. She was very friendly and she had a godly character. Rebecca had a godly character. In fact, there are many people who had the opportunity to marry great men or great women, but they couldn't demonstrate this kind of godly character Rebecca demonstrated. Rebecca demonstrated a godly character. The servant said, the ladies that will come, the one that I will ask for water to drink, and she will offer me water. And after she will go to the extent of feeding my camels with water, she is the one that God has appointed to be the wife of Isaac. And Rebecca came very friendly. The servant asked of water, and Rebecca offered the servant water. And she went to the extent of sacrificing and getting water for all his camels. 
and I said that one camel can drink up to 200 liters or 53 gallons of water and Rebecca sacrificed to get water for all the camels of the servant Rebecca was a sacrificial lady Rebecca was a generous lady Rebecca was a kind lady Rebecca was a very nice lady no wonder Isaac had Rebecca to marry if you are a lady watching me from the nations of the world this morning I pray that Rebecca's kind of attitude will possess you Rebecca's godly character will possess you that you will not miss your husband in the name of Jesus Christ be friendly be sweet be nice be courteous Rebecca was a nice lady a courteous lady no wonder her godly character opened the marital door for her her godly character opened her marital destiny number two example number two elisha we see here that godly character opened the door of supply for elisha the prophet godly character opened the door of supply for elisha the prophet in 2nd Kings chapter 4 verse 8 through 11 now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a, a where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat food to eat some food so it was as often as he passed by he would turn in there to eat some food and she said to her husband look now I know that this is a holy man of God. Look now. I know that this is a holy man of God. That's where the point lies. Elijah had godly character. Who passes by us regularly? Please let us make a small upper room on the wall. And let us put a bed for him there. And a table. And a chair. And a lampstand so that it will be whenever he comes to us he can turn in there and it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there elisha was not just a prophet elisha was not just a man of god elisha possessed a godly character Elisha was a holy man of God. He wasn't just a, a, a man of God. He was a holy man of God. The Bible said his character opened the door for supply for Elisha. Hear this. What built Elisha the house was not his title, but his character. It wasn't his title as a prophet, but it was his character. It was his godly character. The Bible said the woman perceived, the woman discerned that Elisha was a holy man of God. I pray for you, man of God, watching me this morning, that grace will come upon you to stay holy, to stay pure, to stay righteous in the name of Jesus Christ. Elisha was not just a man of God, but a holy man of God. A holy man of God a man of God with impeccable integrity a man of God who, who was living righteously a man of God who had a right standing with God his holy lifestyle opened a door for Elisha child of God it is possible for someone to claim he is a man of God and not even be a Christian at all there are many pastors, many prophets, many evangelists, many teachers, many, many apostles who are out there who are not even Christians. The Bible described Elisha as a holy man of God. Elisha had a godly character. No wonder he enjoys supernatural supplies. I pray for you this morning that the grace to remain holy, the grace to stay holy, the grace to stay pure will come upon you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. This woman perceived that Elisha was a holy man of God. So character is perceivable. Integrity can be perceived. Character is discernible. The woman discerned that Elisha was a holy man of God. 
the woman discerned, she perceived that Elisha was a holy man of God. People's perception of you determines your possession in life. The way people see you, the way people people describe you, the people's perception about you will determine your possession in life. There has been many times I will go to places and the people around they will, they will go like are you a man of god are you a man of god and i'll go like why why are you saying am i a man of god or why are you asking me whether i'm a man of god and they will go like it's written all over you we could tell from your face we could tell from 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 your whole being that you are a man of god in other words character is perceivable integrity is perceivable godly character uprightness righteousness is perceivable the bible said elisha's godly character opened the door of supply for him remember rebecca's godly character gave her a husband elisha's godly character also gave him supernatural supplies divine supplies may that be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ example number three King David King David godly character opened the door of total restoration for him David experienced total restoration because of his godly character I pray that doors will open for you because of your character may doors open for you may opportunities open for you because of your godly character in the name of jesus christ in first samuel chapter 30 verse 1 to 8 now it happened when david and his men came to ziklag on the third day that the amalekites had invaded the south of ziklag attacked ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the woman and those who were there from small to great they did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way so david came so david and his men came into the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive look at verse 4 then david and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep they wept and cried and wept and cried until they had no power to weep again. They were troubled. They were disturbed. They didn't know what to do again. David with his men. Verse 5. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelites, had been taken captive. Verse 6. Now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Receive grace to strengthen yourself in the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Why did David strengthen himself in the Lord? David strengthened himself in the Lord because he depended on the grace of God. He depended on the strength of God. He knew that with God all things are possible. The Bible said David strengthened himself in the Lord. The King James says that and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Verse 7. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the effort here. To me and Abiata brought the effort to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. The Lord told David that David, without fail, you shall recover all. Jump to verse 11. Then they found an Egyptian in the field so david is now embarking on a journey to recover all that he had lost to recover everything that even his mighty men had lost and the bible said in verse 11 then they found an egyptian so on their way to recover all they found an egyptian in the field and brought him to david and they gave him bread and he ate and they let him drink water they gave him bread and he ate and let him 
drink water. Verse 12. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drank water for three days and three nights. This Egyptian stranger had been left somewhere and for three days, three nights, he ate nothing. He ate nothing. I believe he wasn't even fasting. Three days and three nights, he ate nothing. Nothing. Look at verse 13. Then David said to him, To whom do you belong? And where are you from? I love this verse very well. Verse 13, look at it well. And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, servant of the Amalekites. The Amalekites, these were the people who came to take David's two wives and, and children and, and David's mighty men's wives and children. These Amalekites, they came to take all of David's family members in captive. They had David's family members in captive. And, and, uh, and the Bible said that supernaturally, God connected David to a strange man. And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite. And my master left me behind because three days ago, I fell sick. Three days ago, I fell sick. What a wicked master. He left his servant. And, and, and the Bible said, the servant was sick. He said, three days ago, I fell sick. Now watch this. Look at King David here, busy trying to recover all that he had lost. What should, you see, what should bother David was about the fact that he had to recover all the things that he had lost. Not to think of a dying man on the road. David shouldn't have shown concern to a dying stranger on the road. But because of David's godly character, the Bible said, when his, when his men stopped and brought the man to him, the Bible said David took his time to feed the man. He gave the man cake to eat. He gave the man bread to eat. He gave the man water to drink. This man had been left for three days and three nights in an empty tummy. He had not eaten anything. He had not drank water. And this man was sick. And David should have concentrated on recovering all that he had lost. But the Bible said, David's godly character. Look at what happened. Look at what happened. So instead of leaving this Egyptian stranger to die, they stopped, gave him water to drink, gave him bread to eat, and his strength came back. Watch this, verse 15. And David said to him, Can you take me down to this troop? So he said, Swear to me by God that you would that he will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will take you down to, to this troop. And when he had brought him down, there they were spread out over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing. So when this young man led David to where his master was the bible said his master and his servant or his master and his men the bible said they were eating and drinking and dancing they were jubilating because they had overcome david and his mighty men they had stolen the goods of david and his mighty men including their wives and children so they were excited they were jubilating they were happy because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Verse 17. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them, not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. Verse 18. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives, and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. I prophesy over your life this morning that you will recover all whatever you have lost 
whatever the enemy took from you whatever is missing in your life may you recover all this morning in the name of Jesus Christ David demonstrated the character of compassion unto the Egyptian stranger and that made David to recover all. There is somebody watching me this beautiful Sunday morning. I pray that grace will come upon you to demonstrate compassion to strangers to demonstrate compassion to people who are suffering and struggling, to demonstrate compassion to people who are less privileged. And as you do that, may you recover all that you have lost in the name of Jesus Christ. The act of kindness became a key to his all-round recovery. His act of kindness, his act of benevolence, his act of kindness, his generosity, the heart that David had made him to recover all. I see restoration coming to you. I see restitution coming to you. I see you recovering all in the name of Jesus Christ. Good character is far more profitable than bad character. Let me say it again. Good character is far more profitable than bad character. So beware how you treat people. Make, make, make sure you think of others. Make sure you care for others. Be careful how you relate with people. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you deal with people. Be careful. Be careful. Be very, very careful. So, in scriptures, we see God opening a marital door for Rebecca. We also saw God opening a door of supernatural supply for Elisha the prophet. The Bible said he was a holy man of God. Receive the grace to stay holy. Receive the grace to stay upright. In our month of righteousness, I see grace coming upon you for upright living in the name of Jesus Christ. And we also see David recovering all. We also see all around restoration for King David because of his godly character wow now let's look at two people in the bible that ungodly character closed doors in their lives two people in the bible that uh, there are several people in the bible that ungodly character closed doors in their lives we are looking at two of them and there are several people in the bible also that godly character opened doors for them we've considered three now we are considering two people in the bible that ungodly character closed doors in their lives. Number one, Reuben. Somebody shout Reuben. Somebody scream Reuben. Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob. Ungodly character closed the door of destiny for Reuben. Reuben was a bad boy. <laughs> Genesis chapter 35 verse 22. Genesis 35 22. And it happened when Israel dealt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. One of his father's wives, Reuben went to sleep with her and Israel heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12. Let me read this verse again. May that never be your portion. Genesis 35, 22. And it happened when Israel dealt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. And Israel heard about it. Now, the sons of Jacob were 12. Now, watch this. When Reuben went to sleep with one of his father's wives, Jacob didn't say anything about it. Jacob kept quiet. Israel, Jacob, who later became Israel. So, I can use it inter interchangeably. Jacob kept quiet. Israel kept quiet. His father did not say anything to Jacob. He didn't say why or why not. He kept quiet. Kept quiet. There is no compromise without consequence. That is what I want you to know. Understand that there is no compromise without consequence. There is no compromise without consequence. And also, there is no iniquity without punishment. 
there is no iniquity without punishment there is no compromise without consequence there is no iniquity without punishment his father kept quiet as if nothing has happened until he was about to die in genesis chapter 49 verse 1 downwards when his father his father kept about what he did to him he didn't say anything until he was about to die genesis 49 one downwards and jacob called his sons and said gather together that i may tell you what shall befall you in the last days gather together he he told all his sons to gather together because he wanted to tell them what shall befall them as he dies gather together and hear you sons of jacob and listen to israel your father reuben his firstborn reuben you are my firstborn look at what he told reuben my might and the beginning of my strength reuben you are my firstborn you are my might and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power reuben that is what the heaven has said concerning your life you are the excellency of my power in other words when i gave birth to you the whole world witnessed and the whole world knew that i'm not impotent they knew that i was not impotent you are the excellency of my power reuben you have been destined by god to stand out in dignity you have been destined by god to stand out in honor you have been destined by god to stand out in power you have been destined by god to stand out look at verse 4 unstable as water you shall not excel why because you went up to your father's bed then you defiled it bad boy reuben he went up to my couch so reuben was cursed by his father may your biological father never curse you may your biological mother never curse you may you develop a godly character that you will not live under a curse on this earth in the name of jesus christ reuben was cursed by his father because he defiled his father's bed reuben had a wrong character he had a bad character that is why you will never hear the name reuben among the significant tribes of israel among the tribes of israel you will hear the tribe of judah you will hear the tribe of levi you will hear the tribe of simeon but you will never hear the tribe of reuben that is why you will hear the tribe of judah where king david and solomon came from even the messiah came from the tribe of judah you will also hear the tribe of levi the priesthood tribe you will also hear the the, the tribe of joseph but you will never hear the tribe of Reuben. Reuben, the firstborn that almost became the nonborn. He almost became the nonborn, the firstborn becoming the nonborn because of ungodly character. I pray for you this morning that grace will come upon you for godly character, for righteous living, for uprightness in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, he was indeed the firstborn. So all the way to Chronicles, from Genesis, all the way to Chronicles, look at what, what was recorded in Chronicles. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, he was indeed the firstborn. But because he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph. So the sons of Joseph possessed the birthright of Reuben, the son of Israel. So that the genealogy is not listed according to the birthright. Verse 2. Yet Judah prevailed over his brothers, and from him came a ruler. Although the birthright was Joseph's. Although the birthright was Joseph's. Joseph pleased Jacob. Reuben displeased his father Jacob. Joseph had a godly character. Reuben had a bad character. So the Bible said that whatever Reuben had 
before was was taken from Reuben and was given to the sons of Joseph was given to the sons of Joseph so if you are mentioning the tribes of Israel you can't start from Reuben you start from Joseph Simeon Levi Judah Dan even Naphtali even Benjamin you will mention the tribe of Benjamin before Reuben I pray for you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ that grace will come upon you for godly living grace will come upon you for upright living in the name of Jesus Christ open doors through righteousness open doors through upright living upright living open doors it opens doors Reuben lost his place in life and his destiny was closed because of bad character his future was aborted because of manifestation of wrong character and the deficiency of parental blessing instead of Jacob blessing Reuben Jacob cursed Reuben because Reuben had a bad character may your father never curse you may your mother never curse you may your uncle never curse you may your aunties never curse you because of your character in the name of Jesus Christ one day I had a story of a young man who got drunk and was misbehaving insulting his father and his father looked at him and told him that you will not be greater than this beer bottle you will not be bigger greater than this beer bottle and and as a result of what his father said he died before his time he died through a car accident in fact one day he was crossing he was crossing the street and a car knocked him and he passed away i pray for you this morning that you will not walk in ungodly character grace will come upon you for uprightness grace will come upon you for holiness in the name of jesus christ that will never be your portion this morning don't toil with bad character it will disgrace you one day don't toil with bad character it will disgrace you one day receive fresh grace for godly character receive grace for upright living receive grace for holy living in the name of jesus christ example number two gehazi gehazi ungodly character closed the door of destiny for gehazi remember elijah's servant or the one who received the double portion from elijah was elisha and instead of gehazi who served elisha also receiving the double portion look at what happened to gehazi second kings chapter 5 verse 20. now if you want the whole story if you want the background of the whole story read from verse 1 but i want to jump to verse 20. second kings chapter 5 verse 20. but gehazi the servant of elisha the man of god said look my master has spared Naaman the Syrian. My master has spared Naaman. Look at the word that Gehazi used, spare. In other words, Gehazi wanted the, uh, the, the master, Elisha, to deal with Naaman. Well, well. <laughs> he used the word spared. My, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian while not receiving from his hands what he brought but as the lord leaves look at bad gehazi bringing the lord into the matter as the lord leaves as the lord leaves bad gehazi he says that i will run after him and take something from him now this is the story where naaman came to the prophet and the prophet gave Naaman prophetic direction and Naaman was totally healed from his leprosy and Naaman was returning back to where he came from and the Bible said whatever Naaman brought to the prophet and wanted to give to the prophet the prophet didn't collect anything it is not everything that you receive if you're a man of God it is not everything that you collect if you're a man of God it's not every gift that is receivable is not every gift that you have to take you have to receive or collect so the prophet rejected Naaman's gift in other words the prophet wanted to tell Naaman that I don't 
exchange healing for gift. I don't exchange miracles. In fact, the power that I carry, I'm not using the gift and the power to exploit things from people, to exploit gifts or to take money from people. No, that was not what, what Elisha was. Let's continue with the story. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, It's all well. It's all well. And he said, All is well. My master has sent me. Liar. Gehazi, liar, lie, lie. My master has sent me. <laughs> Saying, Indeed, just now, two young men of the sons of the prophet have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants. And they carried them on, a, on ahead of him. And they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he left the men go and they departed. I want us to jump to verse 25. Just jump to verse 25. Now he went in and stood before his master. Don't joke with prophet. Don't joke with prophet. Hmm. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? He said, your servant did not go anywhere. Look at Gehazi lying again. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servant? 27. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendant forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous, as white as snow. Like I said earlier on, Elisha received the double portion from Elijah. And Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. So Gehazi should have also received the double portion of Elisha's anointing. But bad character caused him to miss it. He received multiple leprosy. Generational leprosy. If you are watching me from the nations of the world, I pray for you this morning that your bad character, your bad behavior, your bad attitude will not cause you to live under a curse. Will not cause you to live under closed heavens in the name of Jesus Christ. Be careful when you are around an anointed personality or around an anointed atmosphere. Gehazi thought he had outsmart Elisha. He didn't know that Elisha's spirit was with him when he took money and gift from Naaman. I pray for you this morning that grace will come upon you for godly character. That strength will come upon you for godly character. In the name of Jesus Christ, there are people who work in the church and steal from the church. There are people who they work in the church and they steal from the church. They work in the church and, and, and they do all kind of, 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 of wrong things in the church. May you be exempted in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not work in a church and steal from the church. Hey, is, that one is dangerous. It's very, very dangerous to work in the church and steal from the church. I pray that you will not be under the curse of Jehovah. The Bible said the curse of the Lord is in the house of the thief. Be very careful. Be very, very careful. Hear this. It's one thing to lie. It's another thing to lie in another person's name. That is too dangerous. It's one thing to steal. And it's another thing to steal in another person's name. That is too dangerous. That was what Gehazi did. Don't lie to get money. Don't steal to get money. Don't deceive people to get money. Don't defraud someone to get money. Watch this. The other day, one apple that God did not give to Adam 
when Adam took when Adam and Eve took that apple the Bible said they lost the whole garden one apple that God did not give you will cause you to lose a whole garden if you doubt me ask Adam I pray for you this morning that grace will come upon you for godly living for holy living for righteous living in the name of Jesus Christ remember the character of Rebecca opened a marital door for Rebecca Rebecca married Isaac remember the, the, the godly character of Elisha made Elisha to enjoy supernatural supplies King David recovered all because of godly character and people who had ungodly character whose lives were shattered destinies were shattered and destroyed number one Reuben had a bad character it, it, he, he experienced close destiny Kehazi also experienced close destiny may you never experience close destiny in the name of Jesus Christ this is a month of righteousness. This is a month of uprightness. This is a month of holiness. May grace come upon you for holy living in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, I want us to look at fact about godly character. Facts about godly character. Number one, godly character, integrity or uprightness guides. Godly character, integrity or uprightness, it guides. Psalm 32 verse 1 and two blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered blessed is the man to whom the lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit this man is blessed because of uprightness because of holiness because of righteousness jump to verse 5 i acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity i have not hidden I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Pause and think about this verse. Jump to verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. The Lord will instruct you. The Lord will teach you the way you should go. The Lord will guide you with his eye. So uprightness, integrity, righteousness, guides. God will always guide the upright. God will always direct, instruct, teach the one who has a right standing with him. It is not everyone that God instructs or teaches or guides. It is only those who have decided to live upright before God. Decide to live a holy life decide to live a righteous life decide to stay holy and pure proverbs chapter 11 verse 3 proverbs 11 3 the integrity of the upright will guide them the integrity the integrity the integrity the holiness the righteousness the integrity of the upright will guide them but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them so integrity guides uprightness guides godly character guides number two godly character uprightness integrity speaks it speaks it speaks godly character uprightness integrity speaks holiness has a voice integrity has a voice uprightness has a voice when Jacob was talking to Laban in Genesis chapter 30 verse 33a, Genesis chapter 30 verse 33a, so my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. That was what Jacob told Laban. He said, my righteousness, my integrity, my uprightness will answer for me in time to come. Righteousness has a voice. Holiness has a voice uprightness has a voice integrity has a voice when you can't speak for yourself your character speaks for you when people can't speak for you your character will speak for you your behavior will speak for you your attitude will speak for you in the name of jesus christ instead of you to talk too much instead of you to speak for yourself rather live a godly character 
develop a godly lifestyle so that your character will always speak for you the other day jesus asked his disciples he said who do men say i am who do men say i am let your character speak for you let your integrity speak for you let righteousness speak for you when they are looking for someone to promote in your company i pray that your character will speak for you when they are looking for someone to elevate when they are looking for someone to favor when they are looking for someone to promote may your character speak for you may your attitude speak for you may your behavior speak for you in the name of jesus christ but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way the righteousness of faith speaks in this way so righteousness speaks holiness speaks integrity speaks receive grace to uphold godly character in the name of jesus christ in this month of june my prayer for you this morning is that you will uphold godly character you will embrace godly character receive the grace right now in the name of jesus christ number three godly character uprightness or integrity provokes favor it opens doors godly character uprightness integrity provokes favor psalm 5 verse 12 for you O lord will bless the righteous with favor you will surround him as with a shield there is a dimension of favor you enjoy if you're a good person and there is a dimension of disfavor you enjoy also if you're a bad person receive the grace to be a good person receive the grace to be a man of integrity to have a right standing with god let me let me give you an example let me give you an example there is a way a lady will dress or look and the mother of the man that she wants to marry will go like i don't want to see you ever in my house again i don't want to see you ever again and there is a way a lady would talk that the mother of this man the lady wants to marry the mother will go like my daughter please come the woman will quickly embrace this lady there is also a way a man will look and he will say this is my husband the other day i told our church that the first day my wife saw me i was ministering at victory bible church cape coast the very first day she saw me was i was ministering she told me after we had married she told me that the very first day she saw me she said it in her heart and i believe it came out of her mouth she said i wish this man was my husband i wish and her desires came to pass integrity provokes favor let's look at esther chapter 2 verse 15 esther 2 15 now when the turn came for esther the daughter of abihel the uncle of mordecai who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king she requested nothing she esther requested nothing as watch the scripture again now when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go in, to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's Enoch, the custodian of the women, advised. Esther requested nothing. Esther did, did not ask for mascara. Esther did not ask for eyeliner. Esther did not ask for eyeshadow. Esther did not ask for eyelashes that could reach the ceiling. <laughs> Esther did not ask for Mary Kay mascara. The Bible said Esther required nothing because Esther's beauty was inward, not outward. Esther requested for nothing. And the Bible said, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. I prophesy over your life that your, your character will provoke favor. Your behavior will provoke favor. Integrity provokes favor. Your attitude will provoke favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 17. The king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and favor in the sight of 
in his sight more than all the virgins so he set the royal crown upon her head upon her head and made her queen instead of vasti i believe esther's beauty was not from outside but it was inside esther's integrity and uprightness and holiness opened a door of favor for her may your integrity open a door of favor for you may your holy living your upright living open a door of favor for you in the name of jesus christ good character or godly character gives you favor daniel chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 daniel 1 8 and 9 but daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief of the enochs that he might not defile himself now god had brought daniel into favor and goodwill of the chief of the enochs the moment he made him, you see the moment daniel made up his mind that he will not compromise the bible said the lord ushered daniel into favor anytime you decide not to compromise god will usher you into favor god will bring you into favor daniel did not compromise his convictions he purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the delicacies on the king's table he purposed in his heart he made up his mind that he will not compromise on his convictions favor travels in the direction of godly character favor show me a man who has good character and i'll show you a man who is favored show me a woman who has good character and i'll show you a woman who is favored show me a holy girl and i will show you a favored girl show me a holy man and i will show you a favored man in other words a holy girl is a favored girl a holy boy is a favored boy a holy man is a favored man a holy woman is a favored woman an unholy woman ungodly woman ungodly woman is is an unfavored woman receive grace to walk in godly character in the name of jesus christ finally 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 what are the secrets of godly character what are the secrets of godly character number one love god with passion love god with passion seek to please god above self make god the center of your life love god with passion love god with passion don't let your life center around money or job or pleasure let your life be centered around god mark chapter 12 verse 28 through 31 then one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together perceiving that he had answered them well asked him which is the first commandment of all jesus answered him the first of all the commandment is hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one and and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength this is the first commandment this is the first commandment so the secret of godly character number one love god with passion love god with passion be enthusiastic about god be happy about god let your life be centered around god let your life be built around god let god take the center place of your life don't let your job don't let money don't let connections don't let pleasures take the center place of your life let god take the center place of your life love god with passion and number two love your neighbor as yourself love your neighbor as yourself include others in your life's decisions think of others think about a brother think about a sister think about a, a, a friend think about a, a relative think about others and always be there for others if that thing makes you feel good what about others if that thing makes you feel happy what about others do you think of others do you think about others in mark chapter 12 verse 31 and the second like it is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater 
greater than these. So secret number one, love God with passion. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. What have we said so far? Remember the message is titled, Open Doors Through Righteousness. Open Doors Through Righteousness. And we looked at some examples in scriptures of people who had good character and their character opened doors in their lives. Number one, Rebecca. Number two, we looked at Elisha. And number three, King David. And also we looked at people, two people in the Bible whose bad character closed doors in their lives. Number one, Reuben. And number two, Gehazi. And finally, we looked at facts about godly character. Number one, I said godly character, integrity or uprightness guides. It guides. It teaches. It instructs. Number two, I said godly character, uprightness or integrity speaks. Integrity speaks louder than words. It speaks. Your attitude, your character, your behavior speaks louder than your words or the words of others. Number three, I said, godly character, uprightness, or integrity provokes favor. Provokes favor. We saw it in the life of Esther. And again, we saw it in the life of Daniel. And finally, what are the secrets of godly character? Number one, we said, love God with passion. Love God with passion. And number two, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. I believe. enforcing the will of God by going the ways of God. Any level you want to see yourself on, it will only come by faith. One of the ways to please God is by faith. One of the ways to make God excited is by faith. God is not moved by our crying. He is not moved by our tears. He is not moved by our shouting. He is only moved by a shout of faith. Any time you begin to Please God, you begin to enjoy the pleasures of God. If you don't want to see sickness, you don't want to see shame, you don't want to see reproach this year, you must put your faith to work. By faith, Enoch was translated. Enoch changed level. This is our year of new beginning. This is our year of supernatural supply and abundance. This is our year of turning point. This is our year of good things. There is no way you and I will experience all these beautiful things if we don't put our faith to work. I see God injecting faith into somebody. I see God infusing faith into somebody. I prophesy over your life. You will experience all-round blessings by faith.